Thank you. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, thanks for uh, deciding to climb uh, uh, peak planning. Uh, there are a lot of bridges to Sustainability Summit, so if you get bored, you can cross over, and it will, uh, yeah. Um, so, um, I hope you'll agree with me if I say uh, that supply chain has a bright future in front of us. Um, we have, in terms of te technical capabilities, um, uh, that our predecessors never had. Uh, robotics and automation to basically um, contribute to supply chain productivity and efficiency. Big data and uh, predictive analytics to make sense of uh, the world around us. Uh, artificial intelligence, a lot has been said uh, for right and wrong reasons over the last uh, few weeks in the press. Uh, mobile tech uh, that helps supply chains to support uh, the demonetization, dematerialization, social commerce, Q-commerce agenda of their businesses. And also uh, all the digital supply chain uh, transformation initiatives that have been uh, started post-COVID uh, because COVID brought uh, supply chain to the center of the table, the share of voice uh, increased. So it's basically a perfect recipe for uh, supply chain's glory moment, right? But reality is very different. Uh, so if you follow markets, um, this is the earning seasons. A lot of companies are reporting their quarterly earnings. And I was hearing a lot about um, uh, the impact on uh, financial performance, market capitalization, share price of uh, big companies because of supply chain issues. So everybody thought COVID was gone, everything was back to normal, but we still uh, continue to hear supply chain problems related to out of stock or a lot of inventory. So I went to cnbc.com and I just uh, searched on all the companies over the last three months where financial performance, market cap, share price was impacted uh, by supply chain issues, inventory issues um, or other problems that are purely related to supply chain. And here you see uh, Nike, Under Armour, Walmart, Target, Gap, and not only consumer goods and retail, but uh, Intel, Micron. So it's not a one industry problem, it is a cross industry problem. To such an extent that, if, again, if you're following the earnings season, it is going on now, to such an extent that inventory used to be just a factor. A few years ago, pre-COVID, uh, when financial analysts, they will under analyze the performance of their, uh, their companies. Uh, but now, it is the most important factor. Why? Because it has direct impact on your working capital efficiency, on your margins, on your costs. And CNBC, they did a survey that was released last uh, couple of weeks ago, I think, where uh, they asked the supply chain leaders uh, who are suffering uh, from inventory glut, as you, as you can see in an inflationary context, uh, when do you think you will be able to reduce your inventory? And the disturbing uh, information here is don't know unsure. I mean, the, the only 36% of the businesses that feel that 2023 they'll be able to bring their inventory down, but majority of the businesses, they don't know. And this is uh, what the complexity, uncertainty, volatility that... Uh, uh, our colleagues they were mentioning in the in in the, this morning so now this is the cash impact your cash that is blocked in your inventory that you cannot allocate uh, to other uh, parts of your business there is a cost impact uh, which means if i'm carrying this inventory in my warehouses uh, uh, there is an inventory carrying cost uh, so how do i manage that cost so then they ask the second question which is um, how many businesses plan to pass this cost to the customer now Think of, uh, in, as a business, increasing prices in an inflationary context when your customers are already, uh, or consumers are already tightening their expenses, right? So it's not, uh, it's not good for businesses to have this much uh, inventory. Um, but the question is why? Uh, with all the technology that we have at our disposal that our predecessors never had, why we are in this kind of situation? One part of the answer is uh, the context that supply chains operate in today is very different. So the first one is customer expectations. They are constantly changing, constantly evolving. The customers, consumers, they engage with businesses across uh, different uh, platforms. Uh, this is what like you might hear, digital, digital. Uh, it is a mixing of online and offline world uh, coming together. They want uh, anytime, anywhere, through any device. Then their choices are also uh, dependent now on their values around circularity, sustainability, diversity, inclusion. So as a brand, it is very important to take that into account. And this is where technology can help, but cannot do everything. 
then uh, the um, explosion of touch points. Traditionally, the businesses, uh, they were either a manufacturing business, distribution business, but now there are hundreds of brands out there that are manufacturing, distribution, wholesale, retail, e-com. I uh, spent most of my career in L'Oreal. We started as a manufacturing business, but now L'Oreal is a direct-to-consumer company. They have freestanding stores, they have their online business, uh, they have uh, experience centers, they have distribution, they have travel retail, wholesale. So how do you manage that complexity when number of touch points that uh, you have, they are uh, exploding? Social commerce, uh, the, the, the customers, they engage with brands across different platforms, offline and online. But social commerce is uh, where the hype train starts, you know, where the buzzword starts, where the trends, they get shaped. So that has led uh, to a lot of exclusivity, personalization, that has led to a shorter product life cycle, complex assortments. Here also, again, technology can help, but cannot solve everything. And the fourth thing, disruptions, we have heard a lot about uh, this uh, today. Uh, disruptions are the new normal. So this complexity uh, and uncertainty in which uh, supply chains uh, operate today, it makes it very difficult uh, for us to plan. And if we cannot plan properly, then it will either result in too little inventory or too high inventory or high costs, right? Uh, now, what is important uh, to understand is that any demand signal has two components. One is pattern that can be easily detected uh, by, uh, by advanced algorithms. And then the other one is variability or the part of unknown, right? So we have invested a lot of our dollars in improving the pattern recognition, but very little in understanding how we can reduce the impact of unknown. I know it may sound a bit uh, abstract, so I have put some examples here. What do we mean uh, by pattern and abstract, or pattern and unknown? Let's say Kerastas has a shampoo in the catalog and they launch a hair mask. Now, if you don't know the functional routine of how women they use hair mask and shampoo, you will have no clue as a demand planner on how to prepare a demand for this product, right? And if you don't tell the system uh, this qualitative information, the system will not generate a demand linking these two products together. The next one you can easily think of, you are a retailer and you're doing a promotion on pasta. What will be the impact of promotion on pasta on Arabiata? Because people don't eat pasta alone. Louis Vuitton, they have the standard catalog item, which is uh, in the catalog since last uh, 20, 30 years. The never full bag. They launch a new Escal uh, limited edition collection. What will be the impact? Uh, and the, the best one uh, that, that, uh, uh, that is, I think, the most complex out of all these, you have Virtuo, and uh, original is there, but we launch Virtuo. And I'm, I'm asking the question here, what, according to you, will be the impact of launch, on, launch of Virtuo on original? Will the demand on original go down, go up, go down because of the launch of Virtuo? No. Why? Because to use Virtuo, you need to buy a different machine. You cannot use the same machine. But the demand on original will go down because this is not a patented technology anymore. Starbucks can make it, Illy can make it, anybody can make the capsules that Nespresso cannot. So the point I'm trying to make here is uh, that uh, we have a lot of technology at our disposal, but we still are not able to use that technology in an in a efficient manner because we are missing one part of the equation. And that equation is collaboration across functions within the organization and the collaboration between machine and man, uh, sorry, machine and human, right? Uh, and what can be three simple things that I can do to improve collaboration in my organization the first one is uh, shared KPIs, right? Um, there, is, there was a famous economist who said, uh, all economic theory can be uh, resumed in four words. People respond to incentives. Everything else is uh, BS, right? So what do we mean by shared KPIs? If I look at supply chain triangle of service, cash, and cost, my sales is always focusing on service because service translates into availability, translates into revenue, right? My finance is always busy with uh, working capital or cost. Supply chain is lost always between the three, right? And in the end, the way you manage this supply chain triangle of service, cash, and cost has a direct impact on your uh, return on capital employed. Yeah, I'll go quickly. So shared KPIs means, uh, along with having uh, the standard commercial 
finance and supply chain KPIs. If you have forecast accuracy, uh, availability and inventory assured KPI, you can already see uh, the improvement uh, in collaborative intelligence. And here I'll give you a very concrete example of what happened in 2008 uh, in my previous company. The CEO sent a note to the general management of all the business units, and here I'm talking about 60 or 65 business units across uh, the world, that 25% of the bonus, annual bonus, of the Mancom is linked with inventory and forecast accuracy. And I can tell you, uh, they had the skin in the game to improve collaboration, right? Next one, clear uh, roles and responsibilities uh, across uh, sales, marketing, finance, supply chain, um, um, planning and execution. So if I'm sales or marketing, I'm only concerned on sales and marketing plan. Finance is AOP, uh, and then um, supply chain planning is constrained uh, bottom-up forecast, right? Which is linked with the top-down unconstrained forecast that is in my sales and marketing plan. And last uh, one, um, you can, if you are a, a business with hundreds and thousands of SKUs, you cannot focus on everything. So you have to put your focus on where you can maximize the profitability. So if you look at uh, this, uh, this graph of value and volatility, my high value, low volatile products, I can let the system run the show. Mad bulls, my high value, highly volatile products, this is where I need collaborative intelligence. My turtles and uh, rabbits, honestly, I really don't care. Because if uh, high value, high volatility, I can uh, manage through my system and collaboration, uh, then I'll be able to add value. Uh, so what I would like to uh, say in the end is um, um, something very simple. Uh, we are still to crack the first stage of uh, cross-functional collaboration in the organization. If we can crack it, uh, we will already add a lot of value and will uh, reduce the number of cases that we saw in the beginning. And the second thing is, uh, the stage is set for machine and human uh, collaboration. We have the capabilities today. It is only for us as organizations and leaders to come up and start building uh, the supply chain of tomorrow. Thank you.